It's fine. No, it's oh, gone. Oh, no. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm Cash and I took the long way around when learning how to heal. I've been playing WoW for about two and a half years and I started off as a total loser. And now I'm like, not so much. This video is the only beginner's guide to healing that you'll need to watch. Yeah, she's kind of long, but I had a lot I want to share with you. Ow. <laughs> So if you want to stick around, I'm going to share some general advice that can be applied to all class healers in both Raid and Mythic Plus. If you're a returning player, brand new, or just want to try your hand at the most stressful role in the game, welcome! The first thing you need to know about healing is that there is no set rotation that's going to make you great. Yeah, there can be a certain order to things that make the most out of buffs and effects, but every situation is unique, and as a healer, part of your job is to be prepared to correct other people's mistakes. That mindset is incredibly important. I'm not saying that every death is the fall of the healer or the healer needs to be good enough to fix all kinds of stupid. No. What I do mean is that what makes healing difficult to learn is that there's no program. There's no set rotation that will guarantee that your group lives. You need to be flexible and you need to be really paying attention to what each situation needs. But that's not all. And before the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the number one thing that will boost your confidence and get you on track as a healer. Before that though, you want to make or copy a talent tree. This will define your gameplay style. If you don't want to make one yourself, I recommend copying the build on Wowhead and reading through the notes on the playstyle there. If you want to build on for yourself, I advise opting for as many healing and defensive talents as possible before adding in the extra damage and utility talents. Try to choose talents that synergize well. For example, if you decide to play a Holy Priest, which is a great beginner class, by the way, uh, but if you want to play a Holy Priest and then you want to try an AoE build, take as many modifiers to AoE talents as possible and don't spend unnecessary points buffing your single target spells. But whatever you decide, the key here is to stick with it. Run with this build until you feel comfortable with it. Everyone learns in different ways and at different speeds, and that's okay. There's no need to deep dive into advanced techniques at this stage, just get comfortable with each ability and the combinations. Which brings me to my next point, learning the combos. Most encounters have one or two instances that require some preparation as a healer. These are times when perhaps one cooldown just won't cut it. Knowing what abilities in your toolkit buff and enhance each other will help you prepare for those big damage moments. Moments such as the Guardian phase of Medivh, uh, the last phase of Anduin, or even if your group kills everything too quickly on a bursting week and you get those big stacks and they're out of control. These are the situations that can test a healer and knowing how to combine your abilities to handle the big damage is the best way to ensure you don't fill out of your depth when the moment arrives. That example I gave before with the bursting stacks? Well, that was a real life problem when I switched from Holy Priest to Preservation of Ogre. Suddenly I didn't have Master Spell and I had to come up with some other way to manage the big damage from the high stacks of bursting. So my advice is to research the combos and then practice them. This will help you feel better prepared so you're less likely to panic, which is totally what I do when the big damage comes out. The next very important thing is to have a functional UI. As a healer, there are a few key things you need to succeed. Party frames. You want them in a nearby location, not in the center of your screen, and not on the edges either. You want them somewhere nearby. You also want to show dispellable debuffs on the party frames. A main yet not really talked about function of being a healer is to dispel the debuffs from your teammates. And the most important part of your interface is going to be your keybinds. I suggest logging in and taking the time to set up your keybinds so they're efficient and easy to remember. So my little secret to help myself remember is that I have consistency across each character. For example, I always have my Dispel key bound to R, and I always have an Interrupt ability bound to G. I also use Q for something important that I would also use Frequency, meaning that has a low cooldown. If you have a mouse with extra buttons like I do, then definitely assign some important abilities to your mouse keys. The ones near my thumb... This hand. <laughs> the ones near my thumb... I usually assign to something where I need to stop and cast, like Holy Fire or Living Flame, and the two by my index finger I assign to my defensives. If you use WASD to move, you want to put frequently used abilities on the keys surrounding those, and from there use Shift and Control modifiers. So my single target interrupt will be G, but my AoE interrupt will be Shift G. You really want to look at the scope of your keyboard, which buttons are important or frequently used, and how easily you can access them. Me personally, I'm working with these little guys, so I don't have anything beyond 4, R, F, and V on my keyboard, keybound to anything. 
Now, everything we've covered so far has been super important if you're new to healing. I know it's a lot to take in, so you might wanna save this video and go through it again later bit by bit because we're not quite finished yet. I wanna share with you an add-on that really helps me minimize the actual keyboard buttons I need to use, and it's called Click. Click is very simple to use. Once you download and install it, you'll see a tab appear here on your spellbook. If you click on it, you'll see by default that the left click is used to target someone and the right click is used to open the menu. To add an ability to click, you simply select bind spell, find the ability in your spellbook, and now shift click it. You'll see it appear on the right hand side. And so now whenever you shift click on a nameplate, you will cast that ability. You can also use control and alt or a combination of all three if you want to add even more abilities to your mouse clicks. And the last thing I'll mention around your interface and keybinds is to use some mouse over macros. What this means is that you don't actually need to select a target and then press your ability. Your ability will be used on whichever nameplate your mouse is resting on. This works best on abilities that require a target, such as your version of a castable heal, like Vivify, Living Flame, Flash Heal, Holy Light. Any external abilities, such as Guardian Spirit, Blessing and Protection, Life Cocoon, uh, and your class dispel. The new Blizzard UI has an option for this, but if you prefer to make a macro for each ability, I'll paste the string below in the description for you to use. So I know this video is kind of long and thank you for sticking with it. I really hope it's helping you so far and I haven't even gotten to the most important thing you need to know as a healer. I'll be telling you that in a sec, but if you're enjoying the video, could you please take a moment to like and subscribe? It's totally free, but it lets me know that you've enjoyed it and maybe it's been helpful, which is exactly why I spend so much time writing and researching this kind of stuff. Okay, so the last two things you need to know if you're new to healing. The first thing is to compare yourself. Use Warcraft logs, I'll put a link below, uh, to see everything that the top healers in the world are doing and using. The information can be kind of overwhelming, so to begin with, all you're going to do is look at the abilities that they're using and the order that they're appearing in. This may vary between dungeons and raid bosses, so you can be specific about what instance you're looking at, but the most important thing is to check that you are using the same abilities. If, for example, we look at this Holy Priest, you'll see that his heal is at the top. And if you take a look at your logs or your healing meters and your heal is fifth on the list, then you now know that you need to focus on using heal more frequently. I don't want to spiral into a video about logs and comparison, so I'm going to leave that there. Uh, but if that sort of thing interests you, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video on logs. Now, finally, the most important thing, sorry. The most important thing you need to know about healing, the one thing that will separate you from everyone else. Well, now I feel like I've built it up too much, but it really is important as a healer, and that is knowledge. Knowing the boss fights and knowing the dungeons. Every class healer is different, but the only way to protect your team is to know what's going on. If you've chosen to play a reactive class, such as Holy Priest, then you need to ensure that your cooldowns and your combos are ready for that big damage phase. If you've chosen a class that requires a ramp, or relies heavily on their cooldowns or uses a lot of absorbs, then you need to be pressing those buttons before the damage even hits. And to do this requires knowledge. And how do we get knowledge? Well, there's loads of ways. If you like to learn as you go, then just practice. Make mistakes, take note for next time. A great way to do this is to actually record yourself and then watch it back later to see what you missed. Another way is to research. This can mean reading the raid do- uh, blah, 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 blah. Reading the raid- uh. <laughs> Another way is to research. This can mean reading the raid or dungeon journal, watching streamers, looking up guides or gameplay on YouTube, and that's exactly the type of content that I'm going to be making for you in Dragonflight. Or you can just ask your group, what do I need to prepare here? When is the next big pull? What's this boss's big scary thing? Just ask. All in all, it takes time. If you're just starting, try to do content you know. Maybe the same dungeon four or five times in a row and try to improve a little each time. So next time I might look at doing a more advanced healing guide. I tried to keep this one pretty simple because we have a lot of people returning to the game right now or switching classes. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, ow. <laughs>